And he is also the chair of the National Association for Independent Schools, the NAS, and he leads the Student Diversity Leadership Conference, or the SDLC. As a freshman who was in Nobles four years ago, I could not have imagined that A to A, Nobles' affinity, Asian affinity group, would become one of the spaces that I treasure most on campus. While I, I have explored many different interests at Nobles, a to A is where I can come back and find security and happiness throughout all my four years. I've always looked forward to our monthly meetings. Whether it was crowding into the academic center to eat spicy ramen my freshman year, playing games on Zoom during my sophomore year, or pounding rice flour into mochi my junior year, A to A is simply just the best. I've heard students ask, what is the point of affinity groups? Or why do we have that random block in the morning? Whether you attend affinity groups or not, I hope that by the end of this talk, you can leave with a greater understanding of DEI work and a greater appreciation for affinity spaces like A to A. As I wrote this speech over many days, I was sitting on the plane to San Antonio, Texas for the 2022 SDLC. After the founding of the NAS in 1960, the first ever SDLC was held in 1993. For, for the past three decades, students from across the country have come together to explore their eight cultural identifiers, as you can see here, and to reflect on how their identities of themselves, their teachers' identities, and their administrators can make a school more inclusive. As the conference began, one leader of the NIAS said that as our schools create departments for belonging, the goal is not to belong to anyone or anything, but to live among everyone else. Surrounded by five fellow noble students and 18 faculty, I was eager and nervous to explore what it really meant for an individual and an institution to be diverse, equitable, and inclusive. <coughs> Encompassed by 1,500 students, Amanda Noyan, a keynote speaker, intertwined her powerful story of sexual assault survival with the journey of Long, her mother, who fled Saigon during the Vietnam War. I learned how Noyan's family and her Asian American community gave her the courage to write the Sexual Assault Survivors Act, which was passed unanimously in Congress and ultimately share her experience as an Asian woman with the world. I had goosebumps as she gestured for the audience, where do you find the courage to, to, to show up as you? Now at Nobles, talking amongst ourselves in affinity spaces such as A to A, brother to brother, or sister to sister about racism, microaggressions, socioeconomic status, and xenophobia is certainly impactful for the students who attend these meetings. At the end of the day, we are just preaching to the choir. I am thrilled to have stepped outside of the Nobles bubble, where I was exposed to students with experiences from among schools in the ISL, but also New York, Texas, and the West Coast. While well, Nobles has certainly made strides in the number of students of color who are accepted each year, the next question is that once these students are here, how can we make them feel included and, and among everyone else? At 44%, Nobles has a much greater number of students of color compared to other schools, but there is no point in boasting this number if we do not feel like we belong. As the plane jolted down onto the tarmac in San Antonio, I reflected on the countless conversations I have had over the past four years, which have repeatedly transformed with passionate talks about being Asian, specifically as a girl, and more specifically at Nobles. To sit in a class with only one other Asian student talking about the Chinese Inclusion Act or about Japanese internment camps is a thought that I'm sure many of you have thought during such time. I wonder if my classmates ever walked into class on the first day of school and scanned the desks to see how many students looked just like them, because I certainly have. In America, 
thus the model minority myth raises many questions about the Asian American experience. White people raise us to the same level as them when it is convenient for those in power. For example, I've read articles asking if Asians can hold high paying jobs and buy very nice homes, then why can't other minorities? However, we are conveniently grouped with other people of color to uphold the white mentality of superiority over others. Now consider the college admissions process. While I unfortunately do not have time today to go deeper into these examples, I do have time to tell you this. Asians are viewed as different from other minorities, yet we do not hold the same benefits as white people. My identity as an Asian American woman forces me to live in a state of in-betweenness in the black and white binary of American society. We belong to a complex array of people that fall within Asian. Are you from the East, Central, Southeast, South, or the Islands? Within the umbrella of identifying as Asian, a friend I made at the SDLC East Asian Pacific Islander Affinity Group, or ESPI, stated that as a Mongolian girl, she was strongly related to the Kazakh girl who spoke earlier rather than Filipino boy to my right or myself as a Chinese girl, even though we all identify as Asian. While sitting in cohorts of approximately eight SDLC students, I engaged in discussions about being Asian. I talked about beauty standards, colorism, and college. One girl even asked, what mascara do you use to hold up your stiff Asian lashes? Another girl asked, how does it feel to not be able to speak the same language that your parents speak at home? Or how do you deal with the unspoken expectation that you are supposed to attend a college that is similar to the caliber of an Ivy League school? And does affirmative action really help us? I engage in insightful conversations about how it feels, looks, sounds, and tastes to be Asian. I was amazed and impressed by the myriad of Asian identities that coexisted in the SDLC's EAPI affinity group that day. I heard from multiple students that they were the only Asian student at their school, or that they were one of the co-founders of their school's Asian affinity group. One boy from an elite private school in California asked us what his school could do to celebrate Lunar New Year because they had never done anything before. As I listed off the events that nobles and AA have hosted in the past, I was overcome with pride because I really did appreciate, I do appreciate how much AA and nobles have done. As a core leader of AA, I have worked to enhance our community by hosting dinners, preparing care packages from Asian snacks during the pandemic, making onigiri, and coordinating the end of year Korean barbecue cookout. The a to a Leadership Corps presented statistics and stories about the spike in anti-Asian violence on this very stage. I am thrilled to have helped create a safe space for my classmates to discuss stereotypes, and I am overcome with pride watching a to a grow bigger and bigger each year. Dr. Glasgow, Amanda Noye, and a friend I made at the EAPI group have given even greater meaning to my efforts. I hope that all of you have the opportunity to participate in a space that is similar to the SDLC so that you too can form long-lasting bonds. Attending the SDLC and Noble <coughs> these past four years have helped me realize two things. First, when my peers and I are comfortable in our identity, we can confidently use our voices to form allyship with other students of color. And second, what we can then engage in dialogue with members of the entire Nobles community to foster overall inclusion. Now, as a senior, Nobles has enabled me to recognize the value that each layer of my identity holds. Whether it's sharing a powerful story on this stage, or going to a new club or organization for the first time, I am confident that all of you have the ability to continue making Nobles a more inclusive place. Thank you.